Okay, I think uh, I think they should be hearing us. Hello, everyone. I'm International Master from uh, Romania, uh, Alexander Banza, and my partner in crime today is Lisa Orlova and throughout the whole season. So tell us a little bit about the match, Lisa. Um, hello. So today we have uh, Facebook versus Amazon. Uh, both uh, both corporations have multiple teams playing in uh, this corporate league. But uh, today we have Knights on the Rim versus uh, Game Stoppers. Um, good luck to all players today in the tournament. And uh, we have quite a close uh, competition, I yeah, believe. Yeah, I, I, I like that name, by the way, the, the Knights on the Rim. It's uh... Yes. <laughs> Something that you are not supposed to do, but, uh, but yeah. There are some exceptions. Yeah, yeah. And here we can see a queen on the rim, but uh, the main point is that it's threatening to win the pawn now. But I'm wondering if black could simply ignore that and uh, try to get a king to safety here. Simply, you know, giving up on that pawn uh, by playing uh, playing the move castle short. And this started as a London system, by the way. and. Uh, you can see that it went for through this move that I would see three where queen to b6 is actually known to be uh, Quite unpleasant via this exact move order and that's why it's a little bit better to play the move Knight b to d2 in this current position on move 5 and this is how the uh, Top players are feeding this line, but anyways, it looks like they're just gonna transpose to normal stuff interesting to see that uh, against bishop d6 white decided to, to castle instead of going for the uh, Bishop G3 move, which is kind of played automatically by mm -hmm. everyone. Uh, so, but yeah, now it seems that um, White was relying on this Queen A4 check, but it might have missed that the Knight can uh, can go back to C6. And this is an easy move to miss. Like I, I can recall missing this kind of moves. And uh, Black does what I was saying. And by the way, Black is uh, uh, a Fide Master himself. He has the nickname Digipolis, and it's. Uh, Thomas uh, Wulreich, so uh, pretty strong player, a titled yep. uh, a title player, uh, playing um, playing uh, playing here for the uh, Knights on the Rim team, which is uh, representing Facebook. So uh, so yeah, I think we can actually move on a bit to the other games as well. So I'm on the on the Viva Zero One game right now. Mm -hmm. Awesome! And Ooh, there's the there's an e4 threat yeah already there, that, that's actually like okay it started as a London system too but but yeah then it, this this e5 move came in so my guess is that uh white should have been looking for to somehow play e4 himself maybe a little bit earlier but i'm not sure if that was possible and uh and yeah this is a pretty interesting setup with bishop d6 i think maybe it could have been interesting to just uh play the move knight f3 here ignore the fact that black can double the pawns because then you get um, nice control over the e5 square, which is actually what's the main problem in the game is that now black caught in this quick e5 move, but Correct, but we'll see. We'll see. I mean, it looks like the uh, Well, are we going to have knight a8? We might just see a knight back to e7 uh, But knight a8 was also not not that bad. I mean sometimes you reroute it uh, this is typical, knight like, seven, uh, knight yeah, yeah, this is typical like in the French you go then f6 or maybe even f5 in this position Get a knight to f7 because mm -hmm. the knight on the rim looks really bad, but then you know if it gets in the game then it's It was bad for one move, but if you cannot punish yeah. that then it's not that big of a problem So uh, I just uh, I just switched to the rich game uh, to the red rich game And it looks like we have a Romanian player with a white pieces let me actually try to see who is that. It's Alexander Demos, and uh, I cannot recall meeting him, but uh, it looks to be a, a Romanian flag at least. <laughs> so uh, I'm excited. Ooh, there's about, H4, um, H5 coming. Yeah, let's. They, they played the accelerated dragon, and and he played with this uh, with this C3 Ooh, move. Yeah, the the hyper like uh, I, I don't know like I think this is called the hyper these days, but uh, mm -hmm. in in my days they used to call this the accelerated dragon. So uh, oh, so, so it's I'm usually knight c six first. Yeah, yeah, knight c six I guess is the accelerated dragon, and this is the hyper with g six, which uh, it's it's just an interesting thing to know. 
uh, it's not that big of a difference. A lot of a lot of people play the hyper to try to get away from playing against the Marazzi bind. But the thing is that if White knows what to do, they can force themselves into the Marazzi bind. Yeah, yeah, they they can just start with so, C4 now. I mean, I think starting with yeah. Knight. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's actually there is no way to avoid it, even if you start with Knight C6. Uh, I, I play the Morochi Bind myself, and it's it's quite a useful pawn structure to know if you're trying to uh, to get good at chess, learn the Morochi Bind, and it's not going to only help you in this Accelerator Dragon, but uh, you can use it in uh, in a lot of in a lot of positions, I mean in the English opening and all kind of kind of stuff, you get that position, I mean that pawn structure from, uh, from a big variety of openings. So. Exactly. Yeah, it looks like White is, uh, White is up a piece now. I, I, I really liked his opening, I think it's... Uh, a much better opening than than his rating. I mean, for for seventeen hundred, I really liked his opening. Uh, even though I don't totally love this approach of going bishop to d three, I think that bishop on f five uh, could maybe uh, used as a target somehow in the future. Maybe I would have liked something like knight c three, then try to go bishop b five and put the pressure on the knight. But uh, it looks like what he did was um, was good enough because. Uh, the enemy knight got uh, got stuck on the rim, which is apparently going to cost uh, to cost black here playing for. Um, yeah, uh, uh, it's very critical for black to play king h8 at some point because queen d2 wins the the knight on h6, and I think he black. Just it just happened. It. <laughs> yeah, it just happened actually. Wow, <laughs> great point. So, uh, so yeah, King EJ would have been uh, crucial to, to get a G8 square for the knight. Still, it would have, have solved all the problems that black has in this position, but, uh, you know, at least you get to keep the knight and, yeah, it's yeah. just... Uh, what is it's just that uh, being, being a, uh, a dragon player for majority of my um, chess life career, um, it's, I know, I know, I've lost my knight like that before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, it, it happens, it happens. So. I mean, the, the knight on h6 is, uh, it's actually really unpleasant to play with it. I think we can actually check out what's happening in the only game that we haven't had a look on, which is the game by uh, GM Jack L that's playing Sir Luke. And yeah. uh, they started with a b3 line against the French, which is... Uh, Actually, a very fun line to play. Let's see, d5, bishop, b2, and uh, and black does go for the e4. And here I recall that instead of bishop b7, bishop b4 is quite a precise way of playing this. And after castle, uh, long there is this idea of going queen e7, trying to to trade if you can get a bishop. But this, if you're looking for a fun line to play against the French, uh, this could be this could be a lot of fun. For uh, for white, I mean, it's probably not gonna gonna get you like a theoretical advantage or anything, but you just get this kind of opposite castling positions. You get this g4, uh, bishop g2, then you could have pushed like h4, g5, and then I would have taken with a knight. But uh, it looks like black uh, did a good job suddenly here. I think it would have been vital to just. Uh, you know, even if after c3 the bishop looks quite funny on b2, uh, I think it would have been an important move to, uh, keep to play. The bishop. Yeah, just, just keep that bishop because it's going to be saving the dark squares. Because then uh, we see what was the problem when f6 came in and uh, the pawn was... Uh, pawn was There's wrong. also uh, future ideas of like queen a3, knight b4, threatening yeah, 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 just a2. getting the, just, just getting the queen like that, it's... Um, Usually, it's uh, <laughs> it's a very good achievement for Black when they manage to uh, trade at uh, the Fianchero Bishop. Although I mean, I see still quite in you know having some practical chances here. Maybe to get a swindle because uh, could could be you know could really uh, easily get into an attack here as Black on the on the king side with most just Rook D one and. And it's gonna be mm -hmm. a lot of pressure over over the G file, but uh, but a very interesting game uh, so far, and we already have uh, a decisive result in the game of uh, Digit Polis. So let's actually quickly see what happened there. So we had that pawn on D4, we had Short mm -hmm. Castle, and then Queen B6, and looks like after Rook C3, uh, yeah, Black just took advantage of this uh, really nice uh, attack over the Bishop on D3, and then White is forced to lose a piece. But otherwise. Uh, you know, you have to, to either lose the bishop or the knight. You gotta be, uh, you gotta pick one of those two. And after Rudy he uh, indeed resigned. And also looks like uh, my uh, my Romanian brother won against uh, Cebushka. So this means yeah, that... yeah. One 
One of the reasons why black, uh, uh, or sorry, white resigned in the previous games is just yep. because white has no compensation whatsoever for the loss of material. If anything, uh, they're going to get checkmated very soon with maybe even knight takes h5, knight takes f4, and mm -hmm. the king side is quite open. Yeah, and looks like the, the knights on the rim are actually ahead two points in this matchup against uh, against game uh, game stoppers representing Amazon. So uh, let's see yeah. if they could they could actually uh, can get uh, can get back in the game because we have this well, situation. Well, the reason why I was just mentioning that is because you know sometimes people ask uh, like why do people give up when they're only down you know maybe a knight. Well, that was a very critical situation. It's just a depressing king side as well. In that. Yep, can't game. agree more with that. And uh, let, let me actually do okay. something here. Because uh, in fast games, you could always try to rely on your opponent making a mistake and maybe play on. But I understand why white might not want to play on that position. Okay, so we have this um, scheme by uh, by Sir Luke, and if GM Jack mm -hmm. can uh, can grab the win here somehow, he could try to uh, maybe hope for a tie with with his team. But uh, looks like Black uh, managed to to trade Queens off, which is gonna minimize the the risks that he's been running here on the king side. Although still pretty unpleasant to face Knight H5. And the next move, for example, I'd be really terrified if the rook would be landing close to my king on g7. And um, I, I do really like this knight on f f4. It's uh, it's like a nice little outpost square. It's not supported by a pawn, but yeah, yeah it's uh, it's, it's a nice still. square. You know, even if oh, the knight now, is now, uh, now they're trying to play h5 to like fix the knight, so that knight g6. Ideas, yeah, I see, I see, I see. maybe. Yeah, I was wondering maybe if we could try to get into the f6 square somehow, but uh, probably yeah. Black had oh, a that's, way that's, to defend. That's also a good idea. Yeah, he probably yeah. had just rook f8 defending against. Okay, can we check meanwhile what's happening in the other game by? Uh, yeah, uh, um, yeah, v. Yeah, and it looks like it's a really wild game, which uh, I have no idea what is going on. But it looks like Black is up two pieces, and White is trying to to go for the material here. And uh, and the situation is if uh, if did Bala manages to to defend this as black and uh, GM Jack uh, uh, actually uh, GM Jack is playing for the uh, for the uh, game stoppers. So if they actually get two black wins, they can tie the game. No, it's actually so they need black, a white win. Black should always <laughs> uh, consider in this position that uh, since they are up two pieces, if White's attack is pretty strong. They can always give up some of their material back yeah, in worst-case uh, scenario. That's really but, important. Um, but that's sometimes always hard. You know, if you're uh, if if you are a less competitive player, you can be quite materialistic. Yeah, that's that's one of the biggest mistakes that you can that you can do because uh, you know most of the times you only need to be up a pawn in the in the king and pawn end game. I mean that's that's one of the like first lessons that I learned uh, when I went to to the chess club. I mean, well, you you you're up a pawn, you go to the king and pawn end game, and then you win the king and pawn end game. <laughs> I mean, you don't need to do uh, more than that. And uh, yeah, you, you don't need you don't need that extra knight or rook or queen. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's yeah, it's it's nice to have them, but uh, you of know course, sometimes yeah. if if that's not the case, then <laughs> I mean pawn is fine too. So <laughs> uh, okay, looks like Black is now picking up the initiative. So I think we really need to keep an eye on GM uh, GM Jack's game, and yeah, if we can can look. somehow uh, somehow pull off a remontada here, uh, that would be huge. But it looks like Black is. Going to do what I just said a second ago to go for the <laughs> king and pawn end game, uh, where he is up a pawn. So, uh, so mm -hmm. yeah, tough to believe that White can turn this into a win. And uh, just to, trying to remember you that even if he somehow saves this game and makes a draw, it is not gonna help the result of the match. So he really needs to go all in, and that's what he does. He goes for b4. Do you, do you think uh, do you think White made a mistake in trading off the knights? Uh, should uh, they have tried to kept the knights on the board earlier? 
I think I think at this point it's already really tricky. I, I think maybe to keep like more chances should have tried to keep a pair of rooks on the board, maybe, but again it's still like pretty yeah. uh pretty tough to play since uh since you're down a pawn. Uh so I, I would think maybe he could have done something better a little bit earlier, but uh but yeah. Now the the way it looks like the game is going, uh black seems to to be winning it and uh yeah, also we have a win by uh did Bala, by the way, uh, bringing uh, one point home for the uh, for the Amazon team, but uh, it's apparently not gonna be enough because it looks like Black is winning here. Yeah, if uh, if Black ends up winning, then uh, Facebook ends up winning the match with three one. Yeah, yeah, they're they're definitely relying on uh, relying on GM Jack here, but. There's there's simply not all that much to do with with a bishop and the pawn. <laughs> yeah, and and another thing to mention is that um, it's the same colored bishop, so definitely black has many chances of winning this game. If it was opposite colored bishops, there are yeah, many. Yeah, that that's a great point. That, that, that's a great point. Yeah, here I want to highlight the tactical idea is to just go bg6 and take one c2, because then mm -hmm. the bishop. Uh, will not be able to take as the pawn will be running and also it looks like uh, uh, we have uh, we have a game that started from the next ooh black is playing for the mating now that was that was classy there's no way to yeah. avoid to avoid checkmate and this awesome. is going to bring the uh, score to 3-1 bringing the the win in the first round for the uh, for the knights on the rim apparently uh, not following the principles but winning the match so uh uh, the knights on the rim isn't actually so dim so yeah yeah it, it actually <laughs> they they managed to get a win and it actually looks like the game between uh uh Cheburashka and uh we've started already and we have awesome. what Let's it looks like look. what it looks like uh like a french to me but you know it could also just start with this uh, king's indian attack and, and yeah it's it's an interesting game because the way and the way black played as well it might actually be in time to just uh push the h pawn down the board and this uh, actually really reminds me of a potential transposition even in the dragon where sometimes you end up playing e6 and uh, d5 yeah they, they could also play play right. like this against the dragon too i guess the big problem for white is that okay here i would just go okay you have to go knight e4 and get a knight to d6 but i was thinking well yeah. another route could be to b1 and then just try to get back to all the standard plans of going uh all the way to f1 h2 and then get a knight to g4 because the knight on c3 was a bit misplaced to be honest uh so right. i would consider that maneuver just trying to, to get at typical play because on the other hand knight e4 is a good oh and he just goes for it wow and uh, and yeah that's like a pretty Simple, just get the knight to h2, to g4, queen d2, trade the bishops, and some really um, easy play. I'm surprised that uh, that black played queen b6. Isn't it more, um, at least for me, knight b6 and knight d5 seems a little bit more natural. Getting yeah, the I knight... Think, I think he just wants to attack that pawn, and uh, mm -hmm. he probably will use this knight to, to get it to, to d5, I'm guessing. Although, not to queen c1, I... Maybe he will just go back. I don't think when c1 was needed, but maybe it could also end up as a useful move because you're going to get that. Oh, so he's going for knight b4, d5, as I just said. And uh, and yeah, he might be using that queen on c1 in order to get the bishop trade here, which is kind of needed if you really want to go for the checkmate. Uh, Do you think black uh, maybe should have played queen c7 uh, to attack the pawn on e5 and then... Uh, uh, to play pawn and b5 later on yeah, instead yeah, of yeah, exactly 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 queen seven not really to attack the pawn on e5 because it's already so well defended but mainly to, to just push b5 try to get some counter play throw in some pawns on the queen side with like c4 because generally why it is attacking on this king side so you've got to do something on the other side of the board because clearly you're not going to be touching anything on the king side so if yeah. you're only allowing white to attack you then it's uh it's not going to be a pleasant situation so um so yeah, white is getting now. Uh, actually, here a great king is India move would have been to play a. Actually, no, because he takes the bishop. But generally, you want to get in this a4 and avoid any kind of b5 by black. So yeah. Um, so yeah, 
But it looks like he was afraid that his bishop might be captured. So next move, if he gets to play for a5, that would be the next thing to do. Just skip this yeah. uh, this active uh, knight on c4, and then he can uh, slowly build up the the pressure with like h5. So uh, yeah, 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 and and another thing uh, just to mention is that after pawn b5, actually knight d6 might not be the best move for white because of some knight takes e5 ideas. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's actually a great point. Oops, I made a move that was not supposed to happen. <laughs> but let's see if it's actually gonna uh, gonna affect the game. I, I guess not. But but e b five. Uh, yeah, I mean I was trying to see this and this. And after knight c eight, really important to go for the intermezzo and take one f three with check. But uh, but yeah, I guess we'll see if. Oh, I guess they 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 yeah, actually we'll played that. They actually played b five and he took on g seven first. Yes. So, yep. I'm wondering if knight d6 is going to be played because I don't think that that's yeah. That's uh, that's, that's running into knight e5. That was really well pointed out. Knight d6 runs so, into knight takes on e5. Really, really nice tactic. I feel like this is also just kind of a common idea in the dragon. So see, he he saw this. So knight c to d2. Good. Yeah. Maybe now he's finally going for the right <laughs> for the right uh, route of the knight because uh, mm -hmm. that knight uh, actually made a bunch of moves. Uh, okay, he plays h5. That's also fine. I'm wondering if we can check the uh, yeah, the game of digit uh, digital polis because this looks like a very well played game so far in this variation of the king's Indian. So uh, we get this main line with knight e1. This is one of the old lines, and that's our bishop f2, rook to c1. We get the move uh, knight to g6, which is one of the main moves. But here. Uh, I think a very interesting way to play for black is to get rook f6, get a rook to h6, and then just try to, to go for the mate on the h file. I actually used that line uh, quite, a, quite a few times. Important to play a6 though before going queen e8 because there is some knight b5 annoying idea. Uh, but once you do that, right. it's, uh, it's going to be really annoying for white to defend the h2 pawn. But that's a completely different line compared to what black played. And here it's all about pushing these pawns on the king side. Well, uh, why it's, it's just gonna try to do something on the other side of the board, so uh, Rook f7, it's a very good move, it's preparing this ideas Get to Rook to g7 and we get as typical maneuvers of the uh, of the King's Indian but, um, just, a, just a quick question regarding the King's Indian, but is it very, um, is it is it required for Black to like start moving the second knight towards the King's side, or do you think he should have pushed the pawns first? Because um, I think maybe the knight on b7 would have been better to protect the b6 pawn, but I might be wrong. Uh, I think uh, I think they usually they usually include this knight on on g6. I cannot really explain it why though, but they it just seems to be like quite a common theme to to get this this knight on on g6. I think that's uh, part of the plan, and uh, and yeah, they, you just want to get us pretty much what he did looks really. Uh, standard so far. I'm not sure if knight f6 was the best move here. I would have probably thrown in h5 at this point. Uh, but but that's also probably fine what he just did. And uh, what I like about this, oh, he goes knight takes on b6. Oh, but then there's this great rook takes c8 idea that I missed and black missed too. Wow, now white is completely winning. But I just wanted to show this idea that if we get to maneuver more here, h5, then, then the, this knight from g6 is actually going to come... Uh, to h8 to f7 and then to h6 and then it's going to support the push with g4 but that of oh, course if if you if you somehow manage to keep your uh queen side uh, together but uh, it looks like uh here after after this it was probably already needed to play b5 but that would have allowed knight b6 and once white gets that light square bishop is generally going to be uh strategically winning because this is really the bishop that delivers checkmates in the king's indian the light squared bishop and mm -hmm. um, and yeah, no, it just like looks really sad for for black. Although you know, you never know. Like if he somehow gets a pawn push here, uh, should could still get some play. But generally, uh, this this should be pretty comfortable for white from now on. Mm -hmm. I think he pretty much got the most out of his uh, out of his opening. Really well played by the Fide Master Digi Topolis and can we check out a the game then that's being played uh, by the uh, DT Bala and start is a Pirk and we have this. Ooh, Knight F7, that was a nice move. There's usually like the, the common tactic in the King's Indian to win back the pawn, but here Black just missed that. Well, compared to the King's Indian line, the rookie is no longer on F8 to protect that one. 
and now this was a big problem and uh, my Romanian uh, my Romanian just um, looks like it's gonna lose this one okay we actually have already okay now that's from the previous match and have we covered Okay, I'm back. I'm back in the King's Indian attack game. It seems to be the uh, most interesting one that's being played. Ooh, no more bishop. Right, they traded off the last mm -hmm. time we saw. Yeah, now the whole game plan would be to get this queen all the way to g7 somehow. But the question is whether you can uh, achieve it or not. And uh, I think in order to do that, you might somehow first go like rook e2, defense e2. Uh, oh, he's, go he's going for that pawn. That's really risky. That's really risky. Like, see, he now could potentially be trapping the knight. But I would also simply consider going... Uh, oh, he goes for it. So I was trying to say that here, maybe go, yeah. like, uh, rook e2. Try to get the uh, the queen maybe just to, to, like, f4. And then get knight g5, knight e4. Try to trade this knight off. And then simply, you know, <laughs> try to get the queen. I mean, just yeah. trying to play caveman chess, basically. Uh, get rid of that knight. And, you know, if you get a checkmate, then... That's gonna end the game for sure. So uh, exactly, black yeah. has to consistently be, uh, constantly uh, be protecting the f6 square with the knight. Yeah, now um, k1 is a huge idea. Just uh, beating that knight, and that's just gonna be completely. Yeah. And he finds it. That's pawn b3 that's a... or pawn b4 next turn. Yeah, there's there's also no need to, to rush for it. You could go uh, try to play it the the slow way because because you know maybe, maybe that's also working though. Uh, I was a little bit afraid of forgiving any card play, but but yeah. Anyways, with this mm -hmm. knight, knight is knight is doomed on a two. It's just uh, pawn f five is a play. good try, I think. Pawn f five is a it does weaken the e six pawn, but yeah, I might I might just I ignore it as white. I probably yeah. Just I definitely I definitely don't it. think that black uh, sorry white should actually capture on passant because that might uh, give black some counterplay on the. F file. So it's good. Uh, white decides not to do that. No. Um, it's very, very important um, to anyone who is listening to us uh, today that when you're up uh, or like when you have a pretty good position, it's uh, it's really important to not allow any counterplay for your opponent, even if you're not up material, but especially when you are up material. Try to not allow your opponent to have any sneaky yeah, plans that's, that's that's a very common theme and also something that i that i used to struggle a lot when i was uh, when i was younger especially uh, i used to to get like great attacking positions and uh, you know my opponents would spend a lot of time trying to uh, look for any resources and i would just be playing the moves instantly and uh, you know at some point i'll i'll go for like that fancy continuation where uh, you know from Whereas a position where I could have simply traded quins off and end the game, then it's just uh, cal cal calculation struggle, which you know I miss some move and then it's <laughs> it's no no not winning anymore, and I just you just have to win the game for the second time, sometimes even for the third time, but uh, but yeah, I mean it it happened a lot to me. Yeah, and having my dad as a coach growing up, like for me, my dad he always uh, taught me that it's so important to actually start thinking more when you have uh when you're up material because it, it it's a it's a worse feeling you know when you know that you were up points and you were in a winning game and then you blow it right no no um, def definitely definitely it, that's um my dad's like oh it's okay to get crushed but if you just give your opponent a winning uh if you just blunder that's not nice Right. No, that, that's 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 a great point. Yeah, I mean, you, I, I generally tend to think that uh, you should be spending most of your time when you you get to, to the winning position. So like I, I I used to have this this scenario in my games where I could be getting completely winning positions with more than an hour on my clock, and uh, and then I would would have to like buckle down and try to try to think for for a bit. Like I would be even getting to my last minutes just by trying to to perfectly convert it. But that's not always the case. Like that would be one of the happy cases when I have an hour in the clock but uh, sometimes you yeah. have you have less and you need uh, also some very uh, smart time management which uh, also could, Ooh, black, uh, could be a part black of the game. is a little bit in trouble in this uh, position because of time and 
they have to be very careful with their time management here. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, but it just keeps it keeps it simple. It just goes for the for the quin trade, and uh, yeah, I mean there is no way to I go think wrong this pretty much. Yeah. This pawn is falling. It goes rook c two. I, I would have probably tried to to go a little bit more active here, uh, but yeah, I'm just getting rid of the card. The play should also be fine. Oh, there you go. Yeah. It happens. Yep. Yeah. Anyways, um, yeah. Oh, I was winning, and uh, can we move on to the digit poly scheme? Oh, he's completely winning, and it's it's that game from the Kings Indian that we were just uh, talking about, and it looks like, uh, well, Black tried a Knight of Three move, but it was not really. Mm -hmm. You know, it looks nice, but was was simply not working here because why it just took and. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's actually like you know a bunch of checks, but not more than my more not more than yeah. that. So um, looks it's like, really uh, interesting how how White uh, got their knight on a three, but yeah, even I though the knight is on the side of the board, but now it can't be attacked by the rook anymore, so um, won't be harassed any longer. Oh, knight b five looks nice, or pawn b five. Yeah, of no, he's just he's just gonna quit now. <laughs> Okay, so it looks like a white wins here, and in the other game, uh, we have uh, we have also a win by um, by white. So, uh, from what it uh, what it looks to me, uh, it's actually gonna be uh, two one, right? If I'm not mistaken, yeah, it's gonna be two one, and we have a game that have not started yet, or maybe it started and I was not following it. Uh between uh there's two games going on right now the digitopolis game gm jack and also the chibarushka game oh Those i see i see games. oh yeah is there a game that i'm also not following okay digitopolis win and we have this one oh right i have the akils game between sir luke that's the game right the sir luke game uh sir luke larson yep yeah, so oh, sir yeah, luke yeah, yeah. Uh, see, this is the game that we're missing i see i see it looks like looks like white is winning and this one and uh if if he wins it it means that uh, it's gonna tie the this round if Sir Luke actually gets this win. Correct. So yeah, I really like this knight on c five. Um, I definitely think that. Uh, I wonder this knight on g three can it get more involved in the game? Maybe knight f five. Yeah, I think it definitely yeah. can. I mean, do you remember that white is only up a pawn? Yes, black king is pretty weak, but. Oh. Uh, Sorry, there's also the queen on a5 is under attack, so... Yeah, no, but I it mean, was, yeah, in... Queen train, knight f5, maybe. Yeah, oh, yeah, I got it. I oh, got no, it. This, this oh is yeah, now it's... Now it's, uh... it's pretty decisive now, with winning another pawn. Yeah, two pawns should be better than one, I guess, so... Uh, now it looks... Uh... Yeah, just your idea. I, I would even go queen a8, <laughs> it's just, just the king is gonna be far, far away, and then focus on this knight f5 move that you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. I think that would be like one of the easiest ways of playing this position. Mm -hmm. Takes on okay, c7 so anyways. It, this will just, uh, yeah, I think, I think trading queens will definitely make white's game longer. Maybe not trading queens in that position would have been uh, better to keep the attack going. But then at the same time, as we talked about before, that trading queens, um, it kind of guarantees that white won't have any problems. Yeah, well, yeah. at least at, they at should least you're not, Yeah, at least you know you're not losing when you're making that queen trade. Uh, that's pretty much the mindset that you're going with. And I think knight g8 is actually really annoying next. Yeah, 100% knight g8. Okay, knight okay, so same four. thing. Well, to get the knight to e5, I like that. Yeah. Look at those two knights. 
I like yeah, it. it. It it doesn't look like a knight knight under him to me. <laughs> He's got this really nice knight. Although this one's going there. <laughs> okay, so now White is actually bringing the king. This is 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 doing it by the book. Looks like they they started a game from the from the next round, but we're going to be sticking with this one till it till yeah, it's over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, plus. Black here uh, has only a few seconds left. Yeah, I yeah, hope he will have enough time. Increment. Black is leaving on <laughs> Inker, but to me it looks like maybe knight a6 could be a try of trapping the knight. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. Yeah, that's a good point. When the knights are on the side of the board, and I mean other pieces as well, but especially knights, it's easier to trap them, um, especially like on a2, because the knight only had three possible squares instead of eight yeah, yeah so it's a really good point man chess is so complicated it's like on every move you have to be thinking about oh pins forks <laughs> mates you know discovered attacks end game principles positional like chess is so complicated you have to be thinking about everything on every move no yeah i mean it's it's crazy if you're not uh, if you're not used with it i mean at some point uh, obviously the more you practice it so you if you get this kind of mechanisms that uh, you get decisions like good decisions without knowing why you get this intuition developed but uh, as exactly. you said if you're not used of practicing then you, there's like <laughs> so many things to watch out for in, in these positions and uh okay white takes 1d5 I'm surprised he didn't play just king c5 and pawn a7. Yeah, but yeah, he probably liked that. Would have just been, that would have that, that would have just been faster. But is he um, getting the king know, to c7? Is he gonna play for the stalemate? No, it's not gonna allow it. Sure. Has go. this ever happened that when you notice that your opponent is playing fast, that you also tend to play fast? So I, I'm just thinking that maybe because like white is noticing that black is <laughs> we, moving we see really some, fast. Some, we see some BM here by white just allowing uh, allowing black to queen and then he can mate him. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, uh, good good job. Uh, um, so yeah, Facebook. Uh, was able to tie the match. Uh, so for round, so currently right now, um, Facebook is in the lead, um, but anything can happen in the next two rounds. Uh, so let's take a look. Uh, we have our first game in, uh, which is uh, Dittibala versus Digitopolis. Yeah, and uh, getting back to your question, it, it actually happened a lot to me, this thing where my opponent could be playing quick moves and it also, you know, it, it actually happened when I was very young. So I was just basically starting the game and some sometimes I was facing these very quick opponents and the fact that they were playing fast, it kind of made me feel like, oof, if he's blitzing out everything, I've, I've got to play fast too, which is, is exactly. not the case and you should be using your time and most of the times it ends up, well, they're playing fast and they just play really bad and if you if you just uh, manage to like keep your composure and, and think about a game, uh, you'll be good to go. But, but as a kid, I guess you, it's easier to get uh, nervous about this thing and you start to copy your opponent yeah. or something like that. But uh... but that's but that is one of the that is one of the big mistakes because actually, you know, if you have more time than your opponent, you know, just use it, just like use it wisely. Just uh, don't play faster. Yeah, I mean, because that's you... what your opponent wants you to do. They want you to play faster. They want you to potentially make mistakes. Yeah, I mean, of course, just play fast if you if you know what you have to do. But if uh, you saw that position for the first time, then it. Why not be the smartest be idea to, to play it in like a few seconds? Exactly. Um, okay, so um, I am looking at the game, yeah, between the FM. We have a, oh, you're looking at that one? I, I just uh, switched it to, on I just switched it to, to Viv game that is playing yeah, the London system. Look. And let's see oh, if, he's, uh, nice. if he's gonna play the, the knight c3 move here. This is quite a tricky way to, to play as white, offering this poison pawn on b2. Uh, and then playing knight b5, threatening yeah, yeah, exactly. knight. Okay, interesting. Yeah, that's that's one, uh, one of the dangerous lines. But, but most of the people don't know about it and just play b3 and then 
you don't get like the idea alan but looks like he knows about Ooh. it so. <laughs> okay but uh but by the way when knight goes to b5 doesn't black have knight to a6 that protects yeah, against they, they they have it but but the queen is pretty awkward i guess we're going going to see i mean oh, yeah. I, might, I, I, uh, I don't know this lines by heart, but it looks like uh, the queen should have some problems over there on the uh, on the on the queen side. Now lines that comes to mind is that after rook beyond queen a two, there is rook a one. If you're going back to b two, I might just very well eliminate that knight. Then I could potentially oh, be yeah, getting this uh, this fork, and that's just gonna win material for me, even though I have sacrificed there, the pawn. Is there anything? Better than knight a6? Uh, yeah, no, there I mean, was, I think there was he nothing had... else. And after look beyond, that's a forced line. Also, a3 could be interesting here, just stopping any like potential checks on b4, and then like rook b1 uh, is yeah. again very annoying. But I like b1 more. Yeah. He plays a4. Wow, that's a strange move. Um, I don't think it's necessarily... Maybe he's just wanting to give more support because bishop d7 is coming in next so that if the bishop... Well, see, bishop d7 was not played right now, but that was just my thought. Maybe... Uh, okay, so bishop goes to f5. Uh, bishop goes to d3. I guess that makes... Uh, the, the, the issue with this move, though... Okay. What do you think about this position now for white? I think this was a little bit unnecessary, but if he has the cold blood to move the king to e2 or to f1, I think he was still very mm -hmm. good. But even yeah. here, it might still be quite awkward with that knight on b5. I still think uh, that white uh, has probably the advantage, but uh, I will... Uh... Well, well, think about it this way, that, um, that even though um, white could have played uh, better moves in the attack, uh, a lot of Black's pieces have not been developed yet. Like, for example, it you know, Black needs to take three moves just to castle. So White only has one move to castle. So there are other things that we can definitely take a look at that um, Black definitely has some issues here with a, with not castling his Yeah, king. he still has some, but uh, I think the, the worst has passed. Like, now he, he can at least, like... Try to after ed4 try to like finish his development which was not really the case if white was uh getting get it off that night and using that for that we just uh that we just pointed out but uh but yeah still really tricky to, to play definitely as i as i, yeah. as I, as I said uh, the main problem is that i don't really see clear with getting that that queen from b4 back into the game and um you know that's a that's a pretty important piece that you want to have in the game right <laughs> Uh, which game would you like us to go next? Uh, we could check uh, Red Reach. Okay. Yep. He's playing a Karokan, and he he played one of my favorite lines, GM Jack, and he goes for Queen A5, Bishop F5, which is quite a nice theoretical line, and I'm surprised that uh, you know for an 1800 player he actually had a very good opening, although uh, you need to really keep that bishop on g6 if you if you want to be ambitious with this line because there's no need to give up the bishop pair for no reason here and white just took it and we have this position where uh white has the slightly better pawn structure because mm -hmm. uh, we have the this, double pawns yeah we have four against three on the on the queen side thanks to the double pawns uh plus also what i would say would matter in the long run is uh, is the bishop pair and uh, what should white be looking forward to in this position would just be to develop the bishop somewhere and uh, double on the e-file. If you manage to trade uh, both rooks, then all the end games are really unpleasant because the, the winning strategy is just trade all the pieces. Literally try to imagine there are no pieces and you just play a king and pawn endgame where you are up a pawn. So that would be pretty much the, the easy way to think about this position. And uh, this is why it's a little bit easier to play this as white. Yep, exactly. Uh, okay, can we check the game of uh, Sir Luke? Looks like he... Yep, let's take a look. Looks like they uh, are by playing... The, by the way, I don't know if you know, but uh, Chiburashka is like... Um, it's like one of our old cartoons. Oh, like, I wasn't, um, I wasn't in, aware of uh, like Russian. 
Yeah, it's like a it's like one of the cartoon symbols of Russia. Like when uh when Russia hosted the Olympics, um mm-hmm. they they used that as like a mascot, Chaburashka. Oh, it, anyways, see, it's just see, like see. this little creature. So what That's, does it what does it mean? Does it mean like monkey or does it have any meaning? It's, it, it kind of it, yeah no 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 exactly it it kind of looks like a monkey, exactly. I see. <laughs> it's it's in his picture. <laughs> yeah yeah <I> saw. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I just felt like saying that because I watched no, 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 that those was, that was good growing up. That was good. I have it's to, like Soviet Union. Yeah, I have to check cartoon. that one out. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely okay, some, but anyway, uh, actually talking stream. about the game, other than the 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 person's username. Um, <laughs> I think that was that was an important uh, <laughs> insight. <laughs> so, Ooh, uh, but, so yeah, we have. But, this... but the night on nice night on D five. We see that uh, Cheburashka really likes to to go for this king's Indian attack kind of stuff and. Looks like got a pretty pleasant position once again, and it's just gonna do the same thing. Get up onto h6. It's very it similar closer. to one of the previous yeah, games, right? Yeah, I, I, I like I like though more what Black did because he's ready to like throw in at c4 at some point at the very least, not just yeah. you know go with like a random knight and take on a2, which ended up as being trapped. So uh, so yeah. Yeah, the knight on f3 is also a little bit uh, kind of forced to stay there at the moment because of the pawn on e5. Yeah, I think but... it's why well, it's gonna do something like rook e1 and then just try to get a knight to g4, getting closer to f6. Yeah. Then again, yeah. the game plan would be go queen g5, trade the, the bishop for this knight and then just trade uh, the knight from g4 for the f6 knight and then get a queen here and mate. That would be like the uh, simple and straightforward plan of, of, of doing this, but we'll see. So uh, I see that DG Digital Polis is actually making a lot of progress in his game against Titi Bala. He looks like uh, it's grinding down his opponent in this end game, uh, although it's still like not not an easy win just yet. So uh, so yeah, it's actually tough to get to this. D3 pawn, I'm guessing black will have to, to play f5 at some point. Just use the the past f pawn. Try to distract the enemy king and then we can try to collect the d3 pawn. I would think about that as a as a game plan. Uh, by the way, um Florian wrote in like Twitch chat, he's like, lots of knights on the rim. He's like, I wonder if they have a uh, an in- internal bet going on to have one per game. Mm, I don't know, but so far it's working out for them. <laughs> they are one Imagine. round ahead. Right? So, yep. so yeah, I'm looking at this game and the bishop to c7. Is black gonna 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 trade the h pawn? I think it's a it's a good trade here because we get in king c3. And then this time we're just increasing the pressure over the d3 pawn, but there will be no longer check. So black is just gonna do that and uh, probably gonna win the game soon. Uh, shortly after that, and I'm really expecting bishop e5, king c3 to be played. And yeah. otherwise black's just gonna defend this, and now we got ourselves an h pawn. So yeah, this is on the board. Uh, important moment, white is not in time to get a bishop to a5 anymore, because then d3 hangs with check and think we can move on to to this game where we left it uh, with the awkward queen on b4 which suddenly it got to d7 and it looks like uh, black is slowly Ooh. coordinating his pieces which uh, which is some great news for him yeah and this king on e7 uh surprisingly enough uh, it's actually quite safe there because uh there's there's uh, i don't see a very quick way for white to open up the e-file um, and that's probably one of the reasons. And plus, as you as you kind of put arrows, that the king could obviously go to f8 or g8 to escape if he really needs to. Yeah, yeah, that's that's you know it's, it's there. <laughs> so uh, so yeah, not a lot happening here. I think White did uh, White did some progress here, and he can try to to take advantage of a tactic here by 
trading the knight and then can try to get uh, rid of the main defender of the bishop by playing bishop to d7. It looks like he just sticked with the positional way of playing this, which is also fine. And after knight c8, bishop d7 is still um, really unpleasant. King in the rook and then you can try to take the knight. Then the bishop will be hanging and looks like he's actually going for it and uh, that would be a, a good win for white, although black created these problems for himself because of this knight e4 move. He should have kept this bishop uh, just by uh, playing bishop to g6 and then it should have been quite a safe card. Okan, I would I would say at least better I think than what, uh, what happened in the game. Because uh, now after knight e6, black tries to sacrifice the exchange. But bishop to b4, it's going to be really unpleasant to meet. Yeah. So bishop to b4 indeed played and king f8 might be the only move to uh, defend the rook, but still that's that's going to allow something, I feel it. <laughs> well, it also just allows uh, a lot of trades, which is uh, in favor of um, white, of course. And if the knight captures back, okay, which is good that didn't happen, then yeah, white would have the just uh, doubled up. Exactly. I well, mean, it's still block, but then 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 something like rook e1 and d7. Rook e1 mm -hmm. first to not get closer with the queen. Just important. I mean, I mean, king. white can just get his king also involved in the game, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, but, but there's like an easy way to queen now. He just can go rook e1 instead of a3. I don't think. Oh yeah, exactly, is exactly. Yeah, that's a good, really yeah, good you point. Just yeah, you go d7, rook e8, and there's no way to stop it. And but anyways, exactly. this, should, this 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 is just a statically winning position where. As you as you pointed out, just bringing the king should be should be doing the job, but it would have been a little bit faster the other way. So it looks like yeah, uh, exactly. indeed Digitopolis won his game, and uh, and yeah, knights on the rim are gonna head on the scoreboard in this round. Bum, bum, bum. So we have knight to, to c4, rook to d3. Well, black is actually winning that pawn, so I'm I'm not so sure if white's actually going to end up win this because he kind of did the most to, to spoil this advantage so far. So so the, the way the game is going, I'll be expecting uh, black to, you know, be on a positive trend and... Yeah, one of, one of the issues I think here is that if, if white... Uh, trades too many pawns in this end game um it will just give more chances for for black to equalize maybe because you know maybe knight and pawn versus yeah i mean if, I, uh, if i'll be getting with a king here and try to win the tree pawn somehow i would be really happy as uh, as black but there there is always this pawn that i'm that i want to watch out for because even if i'm losing the pawns and i'm taking those and i can push my yeah. g pawn that would be easily winning for me but uh, I would really love to, to trade the pawns there on the king side if, if possible, but uh, yeah, it looks exactly. like White has this strong move rook to e6 now, just uh, collecting one of the pawns. So we have also a win by uh, by Sir Luke, which, uh, which is... Um, Roshka, right. Yeah, he, he got this nice fork here. And, uh, Ooh, nice the, yes. Putting um, the pin. On G three makes the score two zero for the knights on the rim, and it's that's actually meaning that they are going to be uh, huge favorites of uh, of winning this match. If they if they win this round, it's actually uh, gonna mean that they are winning the whole match. And by looking at the gameplay, oh, they 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 it's happening exactly what I said. So they they just sacrifice those two pawns, but this is a very good scenario for White because uh, he's just gonna advance the pawn and gonna sacrifice the rook for the eight pawn whenever needed. And uh, then with a queen, white's gonna be easily winning. And uh, if white manages to to win this game, means that uh, knights on the rim will actually bring this match home. So by the way, we have a win by uh, by Vive, and uh, and yeah, that's official. Uh, looks like knights on the rim will uh, will win the day. It's three all, and it looks like it's gonna be a four all. Uh, uh oh. Really soon in in this game, yeah. Yeah, 
Yeah, G7, I was just cleaning, like it's not even in time to, to pose any problems with this, with the stay pawn. Yeah, I guess, I guess the only pl uh, only thing that Black could have tried to do is uh, give up the knight for the pawn, but was way yeah, too no, slow. Yeah, no, no, the, the, the rookie is, is always watching out for that, right? It's not never supposed to allow that, because as you said, if you manage to do that, then you get a lot of counterplay, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, white... Uh, White had some cold blood here and won the game, which means the score will be 4-0 for this round. And uh, we're heading into into the next one. As uh, as I said, the match yeah. has been decided already, but I'm guessing that we're still going to see plenty of fighting games. So this yep. one, Reach, is just yep. um, starting. Exactly, just started. Um, we got some fellow, I just realized, yeah, Akils is Canadian, or mm -hmm. actually, is this whole team? Oh, no, not, not the whole team is from Canada. I got excited. No, Jack L is also from Canada, so... Wait, the game got aborted? What's happening? Are they just going to abort now? I guess um... not. Okay, we have the game of, uh, of Sir Luke, though, which played an Alapin. This is an interesting nice. opening. This is a, could be something pretty annoying to face as black if you're not prepared. White gets this mm -hmm. nice center. Yep. But you know, um, I feel like some openings, it's it's nice to be patient. It's like um, you know, you're in the beginning, you're a little bit passive, but then you're just slowly getting your pieces out. But of course, you you need to know how to play those type of openings because otherwise you're giving initiative to your opponent yeah you may, you, you may not get the chance to <laughs> to get the pieces in the game eventually if you're not careful well, like enough. well like for example when i was a kid i i loved um when i was a kid i loved like like i would play the collie sometimes because the collie doesn't require much theory yeah. but it is a little bit passive for white in the beginning but there's not that much theory I think I think so. that's that's a great opening, especially if Black plays uh, with one knight f6 and then with the second move e6. So once they close the light square bishop, I think the quality is actually uh, really really good and it's still played uh, at the top level these days. And uh, but the problem is that if they go uh, for for knight f6 and then d5, keeping the light square squared bishop open, then the call it as uh, is not that effective because it can transpose to like more of a Karo Khan structure. Uh, so the problem with yeah. it is it's not like the London, you can play it against anything. You can play it um, against mostly Nemtso Indian players or, or the right. uh, Queen's Indian players. It's it's very effective against those. Mm -hmm. So, uh, okay, can we check the game? Yeah, I'm seeing GM yeah, but, Jack. Uh, just also a quick question in this. Do you think it's better for, for Black to actually maybe develop the knight to d7 instead of knight c6? Because this d5 move actually looks quite strong. If maybe uh, yeah, knight sure. d7. Uh, I'm actually not sure why uh, Black did not try b4 because to me it looks like the pawn from, uh, okay. uh, from e4 would have been dropping. Four, but right. Uh, right. You're right, that one was just, uh, was just hanging. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. Yep. That would have been uh, quite nice for Black to just play pawn b4. Absolutely, it's okay. Like we all see, I uh, I I made a mistake in missing that, so we all no, make mistakes. No, that's that, that's fine. I mean, that that was a good question. Though, like when they do ninety seven would have definitely be, been preferred over that. Or the idea of getting the knight eventually to like c4. So this is, this is quite a common motive where a lot of people just develop their knights on the initial squares, thinking that, well, that's where I'm supposed to put a knight. But if you like make the effort of going to d7, then to b6, and all the way to c4, even though it takes more time, then it's just going to be a much stronger square for the knight. So I feel like where the masters are really making the difference uh, between the co-op players, because they can make these nuances, and they can also like understand where is the right situation to, to do that. And uh, and they can like get the maximum out of their pieces. Yeah, yeah, and and uh, with knight d seven, there are some ideas of having the knight go to c five or e five if the pawn pushes to d five. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, ideas as well comes to mind. Let's uh, take a look at uh, um, I don't know uh, 
Red Ridge game, maybe? Okay, I'm on it. Looks awesome. Like it's very similar to something that was seen today. Exactly, with the, with the <laughs> double pawns. Yeah, this time um, the the pawns are even though, uh, which is mm -hmm. uh, which is you know good for Aquila. Uh, this queen b six move. Um, I, uh, I'm wondering if maybe just playing rook c seven and or uh, doubling up, maybe no, but no, but we need to protect the a seven pawn, right? Yeah, I, I like queen queen b six. If we can get an end game, then this pawn is actually going to be huge because it's an. Uh, uh, it's a protected pass pawn, so this could be really important in the king and pawn end game. Like when you yeah, that's right, that's right uh, again, point. if you're like think, thinking about it, just like trade all the pieces and you're winning. I mean, this is like the really simple way of seeing this position. Like they play rook on okay, just get rid of all the pieces and you win. That's like the very simple way of thinking about it. But of course, it's not gonna be all that simple. Uh, I wonder. So... I wonder if in this position for black, they even have some ideas of even pushing pawn d4. And uh, trying to exploit that nice uh, open diagonal. Uh, that diagonal just, uh, I don't know, there's just something about the bishop on b7 feeling like it should. But p if we play pawn d4 too soon, then. Yeah, then it you're not, you're not going to have the protected pass, the pass pawn anymore. <laughs> anymore, <laughs> but, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But you can maybe but I mean... consider activating it uh, via this route as well. That's also quite a common. Uh, but, but see, Alex, sometimes you have to take these risks, right? Like sometimes you have to yeah. say, okay, well, I don't have a protected pass pawn, but I'm going to have an active bishop. Or you're like, okay, I'll keep the protected pass pawn, but I won't have such an active bishop. But actually, maybe not playing d4, but playing something like bishop a6 would have been interesting, you know, if we didn't want to play d4, yeah, we well, could get our bishop on a different diagonal. Well, you know, d4 is a, is a very committed move, and uh, I'll be making such moves if, uh, you know, I'll be sure that, well, this is very good, or, you know, I need to play for a win, and that would be, like, the exactly. only chance. So, uh, so yeah, I'll, I would have probably been a little bit more... Uh, uh yeah i would have postponed it for a bit but uh maybe, you know. maybe maybe just doubling up maybe playing just uh just playing like rook c7 rook c8 doubling up on the c file first and then playing d4 later on may have been maybe a better approach i don't know uh, or yeah i would i would think just improve this bishop have, first and then and then yeah. see just just play this and then uh, yeah. Maybe maybe you can try to bring this knight over to like c5. Hopefully get it to d3 one day. But uh, since you already played d4 and it was replied to with b3, uh, I no, it's we... good to play the rook to d8. It's good because uh, he's giving more support. Maybe uh, pawn d3. Yeah, yeah, he he might go for the rook for for the rook lift oh, one oh, day. Queen, queen c6 just kind of really. Yeah, I think he's pretty pretty it, safe but... after f3. Seems to be the only move. Okay, so f3, is there any ideas with something like knight to g4 and then knight e3? I don't know. It's, it, I, I'm it, just it trying to be, be it, it, it could be. It could be you might actually go for it, but we'll see. I would really um, just get that rook to d5. I don't know why. I just want to get my rook to d5. Square. Yeah, I, I like rook d5 and rook h5, actually. Uh, maybe some ideas. Yeah, unfortunately, like it, might, it, it might not do anything, but I thought, like, you know, why it might have some ideas to take the bishop and maybe just get away of... Get rid of them by playing rd5 and you know yeah yeah and and d3 is coming in next turn uh just giving support towards the d pawn for it to keep pushing um i know i like rook d5 i think i like rook d5 now more than um what i was thinking about 100 uh, percent okay so goes, a5, a5. I think. is that to uh, is that to stop like uh potentially white's play on the queen side uh... um I'm trying to to understand, although it's it's not simple. I have to say, what's the point when uh, they they take on e5 on a5? I'm trying to calculate if there's like queen b6, uh, but I'm but I'm not sure what I'm missing. Or maybe maybe the idea is to play pawn a4 and then uh, I don't know, and maybe try to trade off the isolated pawn. Yeah, but but what if white takes on a5 now? That's true. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Yeah, sorry. Yep. That that's what I'm. Uh, that I'm. What maybe, I'm thinking maybe about. The, maybe maybe the idea is to play queen to a six. No, but then there's pawn b four. 
I mean, that's, uh, that's still fine, I think. Even yeah, if they go it. like Knight xb7, Black will get nice, nice compensation on, on the file, but. Again, this oh, is just... oh, oh, oh! What about, what about just pawn d3, queen b6 check? Uh, queen b6 and then, then d3? Or, or d3, or, no, I mean, oh, does it matter? I guess it does matter. The move yeah, order. Yeah, 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 yeah it, it does matter. Oh, he just yeah, goes for rook a5. Yeah, That's an interesting like... idea. Yeah, might not but, be but working, D3, though. But, yeah, but d3 doesn't work now because the bishop takes d3. Yeah, but but watch out for for this bishop takes h7 idea now. <laughs> That's a nice. Oh topic. yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah, bishop takes h7. Oh, and he allows it. Oh wait, no, the queen's hanging anyways. <laughs> yeah, 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 in trouble. Uh, okay, can we? Oh, he went for it anyways, but it's not that great now because after after king takes rook c6, uh, rook a5, black will have uh, two pieces for two the pieces. rook. Rick. Yeah, exactly. So Black, Black is back in the game suddenly, somehow. Yeah. Uh, just one second. I'll be right back. Yeah, sure. Take your time. I'm I'm checking the other games in the meantime, and I'm watching this Sir Luke, which looks completely winning for White. Uh, cause it's up an exchange, and Rook C7. It's probably kind of calm or queen d5 that's also fine simply getting rid of the queens because queen g8 is a huge threat next so black has no way in avoiding that and it looks like uh, we're gonna get there oh we just allowed queen g8 and there is checkmate for sir luke and um yeah Knights of the Ream uh, take the advantage in uh, in this last round. Oh, nice, nice. Uh, by the way, uh, I see this game where where Vive just uh, wait just won. How did he won? Wasn't it that position that we've been looking at? Oh no, we haven't checked this game. Never mind. <laughs> uh, let me update uh, the, the yeah. scoreboard. Okay. No, we, we haven't checked this one. I've, I've just checked. But yeah, it looks like... Uh, looks like Knights and the Ream win this match in a pretty convincing fashion. Now they're up to go in the in the last round. And with two games that have still been played, uh, let's see if, um, uh, you know, they could try to come back into the game. I quite like White's position here. He seems to be handling pretty well this kind of Kings Indian structure. While uh, in this one, now white is actually probably winning since knight takes on b3 runs into rook d7. Even rook b4. Now bishop d5 is uh, is an important move. But but in this kind of situations, uh, really the rook and pawn, and pawn are really strong when you have a passed pawn. And I'm guessing that in the future white will have to, I mean black will have to give up a piece for this passer. And then white's gonna be up an exchange in the end game, which is generally gonna translate to a winning position for for white. But we'll see. So uh, so yeah, I'm looking. I'm just switching again to the to the king's Indian one, and uh, now c six would be a great break. There is simply no uh, kind of play which, against uh, it. Which which game uh, between? Red I'm Ridge? on the digital police game. Uh, and he's playing yeah. this 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 king's ending game. Okay, where uh, can just... I guess this game is still uh round. It's round four, right? Yeah, it's it's the last, it's one of the last games. And after c six, I'm 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 trying to understand if bishop c eight happens, then uh, then probably uh, you should be increasing the pressure on this knight somehow. I don't really see how, because bishop c8 b5, I'm running into knight c5, allowing counterplay attacking the queen. It's a great counter attack, but maybe after bishop c8, we could simply pause and just double our rooks and friendly take on b7, and the knight has no way to, to escape. I think maybe that's a better way than, than playing b5. b5 would be a big mistake, allowing uh, a lot of counterplay. Yeah, he, he goes rook a3 immediately, which could also be useful in defending the third rank. I really like how white plays this. Yep. Doubling up. 
You know, it's ready to double up and just uh, the, the simple plan of taking. Okay, now a g4 is good because you can no longer take with a bishop because b7 hangs. Yeah, I know just oh, take, yeah, uh, take on b7. Oh, yeah, the knight. Uh, knight out of the way to protect the f3 knight. No, there's just you just collect yeah, on b7 yeah, and right. collect the a6 Capture knight. The yeah, there's no yeah. no need to worry about a doubling of the pawns here because you always have bishop g2 and you're you're all good. But we'll see. No, no, no. Point. That's a good point. I was just worried about the the king's safety because the knight's looking in that direction. Um, you know, the queen's looking in that direction. You can actually just just play bishop e2 now because the because the knight is still trapped on a6. Just make sure there's no no weird no weird anything, and uh, and yeah, you can be collecting the knight next with the with because it's not running anywhere. So I think white is actually gonna play bishop e2 here, other than allowing any like weird counter play because he seems like he's taking his time so when players are usually zoned in they they, they can find this kind of moves just you know just go bishop 2 and then the knight is lost anyways i think white's gonna find it it's quite a nice move from a human point of view i'm pretty sure that the the, the computer would just take on a6 immediately because there's nothing but as a human you don't really want to to allow any unnecessary complications and now suddenly the knight drops and the king is really nice and safe and that's just gonna be uh, leading to a resignable position for black soon how how about this game looks like white is also making some progress with a uh, with the king activity now the knight is dropping so looks like uh, aquila wins and uh, also digit police wins so to me, it looks like it's going to be a 3 1 score in the final match. Mm -hmm. and this is going to be the last game. Probably Black is looking for any tricks, but there's simply nothing. The, the main problem is that Bishop F3, Bishop F3, Queen H4 would be kind of a nice idea trying to set up any Knight G3, TPL King's Indian traps, but there is just Bishop takes on H5, eliminating that. He could still try rook g8 though. Now it's a good moment to, to start collecting some material. And. and yeah. By the way, I believe uh, I I believe there's one person um, that uh, that they made a mistake in playing the fourth round in round three. So technically we still have we still should be having another match between Vive and um Achilles. So you mean they're going to, to repeat their game? Uh not repeat it. It just hasn't been played. Oh I see. One second. I'll I'll I'll, I'll message uh, Florian. I'll just uh message Florian. Um yeah no 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 continue uh commentary. I'm just gonna uh, I just want to make sure that everyone uh, plays their match. So yeah, sure. Also, you can you can you can check idea. check if we are going to get uh, any potential <laughs> interviews. Yeah, yeah. Um, we have one person on the Facebook team that will be doing the interview, but we're just uh, we're getting someone for the Amazon team. Um, uh, that. Okay, so White is uh, offering this trade, trying to bring this queen into the, the corner of the board. Now I'm expecting a move such as like queen c4. Maybe even something like knight b5, we could consider throwing it in, adding the c7 pawn. He has a rook c1 next. Yeah, he goes for it. I think black would play bishop to d8, but again, just a simple rook c1. There's nothing happening on the king side. So I'm guessing white should be should be winning this. Okay. Um, no, everything is good. I think all of the... There's only one game left. Yeah. Yeah, I was, I was, cur I was curious because uh, I've, been, I've been looking at all the games. Oh, Ooh, no, no, no. I was, just, I was just making sure uh, for some reason... Um, 
the round three between Vive and GM Jack was wasn't showing up, so I was just uh, worried because one of the games was aborted, right? So I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, that yeah, everyone I got think it. They, they restarted it. Yeah. Okay, Bishop. No, that's, a, that's safe move. Nine G five would have been would have been a, a brilliant move here, though. If the takes the queen comes in to the to the to the king side, even this is Ooh. completely winning. Like at this point. Mm, yeah. Simply black does not have enough. Like when G4, you just go 91, defend against everything, and you are ready to. By the way, on bishop G2, I'm pretty sure you could also just grab the queen with rook to C7. Okay, I mean, he can take now. Black will probably play king H8, but. Now, uh, could probably already start taking on d6 because if bishop g2 and knight f7 and knight e5 looks to be winning the queen because the enemy mm -hmm. king is uh, it's getting caught. Knight h2 also fine. Now, that's mm -hmm. actually like an easier win because the queen has to move away and then we pick up the bishop. The queen yeah, exactly. was, was supposed to retreat to like a d7 square to be able to defend the bishop because of the pin. But unfortunately, there is no no square left on the on that diagonal since all of them are covered. So. So yeah. I think this uh, the scheme is gonna be over in in a few moves. So uh, so yeah, looks like the score it's gonna be three one for uh, for knights on the rim. So Facebook. Uh, kind of dominating this match, they they won three rounds, and uh, only only tied in uh, in one, but uh, but yeah, maybe it was uh, yeah, a little it's, bit of uh, an... it's currently eleven to four. Um, it's currently eleven to four, and uh, it's not including this game, so it seems like it will be twelve to four this match. Yeah, I I mean twelve to four in in general. Yeah, yeah. It was just maybe a little bit of an off day for the uh, Amazon guys, or you know, they still should uh, should be focused for the f for the next rounds. Like if Rook G three, then Rook C three is really important. You could even give up the queen though. <laughs> like I'll just probably give up the queen. Would X on D two. No, I'd probably just take one d6 for the knight. Black is black is trying to fight. And black is trying to fight here without a queen, but I think white might be able to keep everything together. Okay, I mean he's trying bishop f2, but that's also not doing anything. Queen a3 now is a very nice way to end the game, highlighting the fact that black has some issues on his own with the king. Or go rook c2. <laughs> I guess trading into the end game where your upper queen is also fine. Yep, and this is the end of the game. And final score of the match is 3-1. Uh, and uh, I will just put on the B or B with an, yeah, with an overall score of up uh, by both teams. I mean, um, yeah, uh, I hopefully Amazon Game Stoppers could have uh, luck, you know, for for the next match. But uh, they were playing uh, against a pretty strong team, so. Um, I do wish uh, I do wish both of the teams good luck in the next uh, in the next match, and I hope they've been actually enjoying um, yeah. enjoying the, the tournament so far. Do you think we're going yep. to, to get the interview? Yep. Okay. All right, we are uh, we are back. I think uh, they can see and hear us. Okay, perfect. Uh, well, uh, good job uh, for both teams. Uh, I know it was uh, it was definitely some really really interesting games, some hard games uh, from both sides. But uh, but Facebook, congratulations today on um, 
on winning today's match with uh, 12 to 4. You guys uh, definitely uh, did a good job, but um, but as I said, there were a lot of close games with uh, with the Amazon team as well. But Facebook, how how do you feel about the match? Um, feeling pretty good. Uh, it was nice to get a uh, get a win on the board here going into playoffs next week. Um, personally, I, I didn't you know I didn't watch really the play of my teammates. I feel like I played uh, decently well, probably not as well as I, I could have in some games, but uh, pretty pretty satisfied overall. Okay, that's uh, that's good. And how is uh, how is actually your team uh, doing so far um, in uh, after six weeks? Uh, I believe league. we are five and one. I think we lost one match against the uh, uh, another Amazon team, the uh, the Ard Ardvarks or whatever. Uh oh, is. yeah, that 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 team's uh, quite strong with uh, with yeah. quite a few titled chess players there. Um, that's uh, that that's that's really good, and uh, I wish you uh, luck for for next week, uh, and hopefully you guys could even. You know, maybe go towards uh, first place. Um, and uh, regarding, so Amazon, how do, how do you feel about today's match and uh, the tournament in general? Heartbroken. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm good otherwise. It was a, a tough match. Uh, just like my opponent uh, mentioned, uh, I didn't have the chance to, to look at other games because I was mm -hmm. so focused on, on my own games. I think uh, definitely I, I could have done better. I think uh, this on the second round, I think I had a winning position like two points up, but like time, uh, I ran out of time. Uh, still a loss, uh, mm -hmm. but but yeah, no, I, I think we we can do better and you know having fun. Uh, this is definitely a good opportunity not only to to get better at, at chess but also you know networking. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this is the very first year that CEA is hosting chess, and it's uh, it's definitely a nice uh, addition, especially with the Queen's uh, Gambit uh, boom, um, <laughs> yeah. chess boom going going on here. Um, and uh, d by the way, did both of you uh, prior to this tournament, like, did you guys uh, used to play uh, competitively as kids or just always been casual chess players? Um, I guess... Uh, Let's have um, the Amazon team go first. Um, uh, have you? Yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. Uh, back when I was in high school, uh, that's when I started playing, like uh, going to tournaments and whatnot. And then, you know, uh, life happened. <laughs> <laughs> of course. And then, yeah. But I started playing again. Uh, when I moved to, to Canada, I actually think I met you personally here. Uh, I live oh. in Toronto. Yeah. Oh, I, nice. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I think <laughs> Long you time no in see. the <laughs> Yeah, Annex Chess Club. I think yeah. I met you. Okay, okay. Uh, that's pretty cool. Um, that's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, it's uh, um, Toronto has a big, uh, big chess scene um, there, but not with COVID yeah. anymore. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, everything is virtual now. Yeah. <laughs> um but uh but how about uh how about you um how about facebook like did you play uh did you play chess like as a kid growing up or as a high school or uh -huh. um yeah i started in the uh in second grade of elementary school and then um continued all the way through high school uh i actually won like uh the uh ohio like high school uh championship tournament or whatever that thing is so <laughs> okay I was, uh, uh, feeling pretty good about that but then uh like my opponent said life happened and uh <laughs> and i course. dropped the game <laughs> and uh yeah, that's it didn't really play in college but it's starting to get back into it now yeah no exactly and i mean i think this is a definitely a good opportunity um to you know even just have a somewhat of a more competitive feel right towards the chess game because you everyone could play online right but this is a definitely a little bit more competitive gets your adrenaline uh going a little bit because you want to do well for your team right so um but uh but yeah thank you uh for both of you being here um you know, being here for the interview and also playing uh, playing a good match today. And uh, yep. good luck. Good luck in future games, guys. And um, 
and yeah, I hope to see you soon back here um, on our stream in the future. Absolutely. Right. Thank you very much. All right. Hope to see you next day. Okay. Right. I okay. Think that that should be it for the stream, and uh, thank you everyone for watching, and hopefully we'll see you. Uh, the next week at the same time, 7 uh, p.m. Romanian time. Don't forget about that. And, uh, or 10 a.m. Uh, Pacific. <laughs> yeah. 10 a.m. Pacific. Okay. okay, awesome. Bye, guys. Right. Bye. Okay.